All right, welcome back to part two of the Maya 2011 or the Maya dust smoke particle tutorial. This is part two, so go back and watch part one if you haven't um, watched that yet so you can set this up. So anyway, I'm right back to where we left off. Uh, we're going to adjust these particles a little bit more, and we're going to play around with some of the various properties of our uh, our gravity and, and whatnot. So let's take a look at the particles first. Um, you can see where we left off. Um, I just sort of had this uh, gravity field kind of cruising through. Uh, you can see where it's slicing through and doing its thing. And that's cool. It could be a waterfall or something. Um, depending on how you use this and what position you put it in, um, you know, you can make it uh, appear as, as though it's, it's something different. So let's take a look at it from a different angle. And as you can see, um, the, the particle size itself uh, are called points and this is what I was talking about you can vary the size of these points and um, in order to do that what we have to do is come over to the particle shape okay and what we're looking for in the particle shape is what's known as the um, add attributes for okay so right now you can see where it says particle render type is points and that's referring to what this looks like over here. These are points. Now, if I go ahead and, and say, OK, current render type, I'll click on there. And now you can see where it opened up two more options that don't necessarily appear unless you click this. And that gives you your point size. Right now, they're set to 2. Let's try setting this to 1 and see what happens. OK, you can see where uh, they changed. Uh, they us rewind the animation and, and play. Now they're a little more dust-like. Um, they're a little more, uh, they, well, they're smaller um, because we, we um, made a smaller point size. So in essence, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's take a quick render to see what that might look like. And if I click on my render view over here, you'll see where I'm in Maya software when I, when I hit my, uh, my render button there. What you want to do is maybe switch over to Maya hardware. And when you switch to Maya hardware, We'll take another render, and now you can see the, the particles, because these are our Maya hardware particle type render. So anyway, just be aware of that. Uh, that's kind of what it looks like. So I'll just minimize that for a second. Let's come back up here and change our point size now to say point size three. All right, now you can see where they changed, and, and they're quite a bit bigger. So let's see what that looks like. Now they're chunkier. They feel more like, like chunks, uh, maybe sawdust or whatever. So anyway, you get the idea. Uh, that's how you change your point size on those. So I'm going to hit pause. And I think what I'll do is just put my point size back down to, uh, to 2. And we'll go with that for the moment. So let's take play on that. Make sure you rewound to the beginning. And let's hit play. And there it is. Okay, now, uh, one other cool thing, if you think about it, is if you turn this thing upside down, okay, now look at what, what it looks like in, in, in the reverse direction. Uh, we'll hit play. <laughs> so you can see where now we have some upward drift. It could be bubbles, it could be anything, and, um, you know, that's kind of cool. So there it is cool particles. <laughs> okay, let's play around with these a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sort of take the top view down and move over, or maybe we'll just go back to our, our home view. And uh, let's take a look at a couple other properties here now. Um, if your particles are selected, you can see your particle shape. Uh, let's take a look at the, let's take a look at a couple of things up here. Um, by default, it's probably best when you're just messing around with these to leave these um, where they're at. But you can check your lifespan mode down here, and it's saying live forever. So the particles are basically living forever. Um, if you want to change those up, you might want to try, like, say, a, a random range. Okay, and now I can sort of have some variance here. So now that I chose random range, and they have a lifespan of one, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we'll kind of see what, what happens to those. You'll notice that most of this stuff is happening underneath here. And 
I'll go ahead and sort of hit that. So you can see we're, we're just changing them to a random type has left us with a, oh, we can, we can sort of, uh, you know, vary uh, different properties about how long they live. So that could affect your animation. So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, you could give them a lifespan of one. Let's give them a lifespan of two and see what happens. I'm going to rewind this and we'll go back to here. And now you can see where they're they're sort of living for a little bit longer and they're sort of reaching a little deeper into the the scene if it were like say a scene okay now let's switch this lifespan up to three and see what happens there um, you'll notice that they they'll probably go a lot further yeah see so that's one way of of um, you know messing with the the particle Oh, a mission, so to speak. All right. So you get the idea. That's your lifespan mode. Um, you know, there's some other uh, other stuff down here. You could you could maybe mess around with setting this to some other type of, of thing like spheres or something. For the moment, I'm going to just use points because when you start using, say, clouds or spheres, you have to really adjust your particle level. So you kind of want to do that first. I have my particle level adjusted really high here. So, you know, uh, if you're going to change your, your particle type down here, uh, just be aware that <laughs> depending on how many uh, particles you have in there, you could just crash your system It'll or it'll take forever to render. So anyway, just something to be aware of. Um, all right, so let's get out of this for a second. Let's look at this gravity field now. I'm going to come over here and uh, I think I'll, I'll just select my gravity field. And here it is over here. Now, right now, you can see where it's at a magnitude of 100. And really, when I selected this gravity field, these are kind of the only options that you're going to have. Um, and you can see that there's some various various things to play around with here. What we're going to look at really right now are the main properties of the gravity field and that's magnitude. So you can see where I have a magnitude of positive 100 and it's dropping the particles straight down. Uh, let's go back to the beginning here and let it play for a little bit. Okay, so they're dropping straight down. Now if I come in here and change my magnitude to say half of what it is, we'll just put the slider in the middle there and let's rewind and now you can see where well they're going up all right so let's see what that looks like on a positive level they're sort of emanating and going up and being slightly disturbed by the gravity field now what happens if we take this all the way down to a negative 100 well let's see there they go so they have basically the same upward motion as they did downward by just changing your magnitude from a, a negative 100 to a positive 100. So anything in the middle is really going to sort of just, you know, give you half and half. So let's take a look at this on the middle. I think I'll, I'll stop it right about there. And let's take a look and see what's happening. Not much is happening underneath. So in that case, our magnitude is making a difference as to how we want this to appear. So if I want to go back to negative 100 down there and come back here and let's take play. All right. So you get the idea. That's your gravity field in there. And now let's uh, take a look at maybe a couple of other oh hidden options. Uh, Let's see, you can change your, your attenuation a bit too. Um, let me come back here to the beginning and let's look at this attenuation. Right now it's it's at 9.4 whatever. So as you're experimenting, just sort of remember where you're at. Um, I was roughly, let's see, 9.5. So let's, let's change this. Let's just move the slider a little bit down this way and see what happens. <clears throat> and let's give it a, a play. Okay, so by changing the attenuation a little bit, you can see where it, it gives you a whole different effect. Um, and that's pretty cool. So you get the idea, attenuation. And maybe let's just mess around with it down here. And let's sort of rewind and see what happens. All right. 
That's kind of a cool effect. So you can see where by just having a, some particles and, and something going on in there, like a little gravity field uh, going through there, that you can do a lot with, uh, with particles. And, you know, this isn't just limited to this type of particle. You can use just about any type of particle. So, yeah, anything you can imagine, you can create. So I'm going to pause this and let's rewind, come back to the beginning. And I think I'll bring my attenuation down even more. And let's see what happens. Okay, so it's just slicing through there. So it's throwing up some some dust. <laughs> okay, so you're going to have to think about different ways of it being able to attach this. Now, one of the last things, well, let's see, we don't want to get into the last thing yet. I'm going to go ahead and since I like where we're going here, I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go to Save Scene. And I'll, I'll just give this scene a name because I, it's untitled right now. So I'll just call this, um, you know, uh, Tornado or something. All right, Tornado because I might be able to make this into a tornado. And I think I'll just save it to my uh, regular Maya default folder. And there it is. Yes. OK, so there it is. Um, let's look at um, the direction. It's saying negative Y. You can feel free to play around with your directions here now once you, once you get it set up. So play around with that. Um, you know, you can. Uh, Sometimes you can choose um, max distance, and uh, this will give you varying distances. Um, let's say we, we, we take this down here to like half, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see where it's it totally, totally messed with it. Um, it's not, not really going anywhere. So let's put a, a keyframe on here and move that up. And let's move back to the beginning, and let's see what happens here. Okay, so you're gonna have to mess around with with your various um, properties in in these. Uh, I'm gonna turn max distance off and see what happens. Um, play around with them; they're fun to discover things um, and experiment. And um, man, you could just do a, a ton with particles. So let's see. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff to play with. For the moment, though, I think I'm going to get out of this gravity field. I'll just go ahead and select my particles and my particle shape. And let's look at um, a couple of different things up in here. Um, we can do a, well, in this case, since we're working with, um, with uh, points, there's not really a level of detail that, that's going to make much of a difference. Um, you can come down here and let's let's just for kicks and grins change it from points to say like spheres all right you can see where where that really you know there's a lot of particles there I don't even know if this is gonna play but we'll see okay so we can see spheres rising um, let's try this let's go into this particle um, let's let's look at the particle emitter and let's maybe change this to let's maybe drop a couple of these zeros out of here all right and um, so now we'll we'll kind of set that down a little bit and see what happens so that's still quite a few so let's actually move this down a little bit more let's 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 take a zero off of there and now let's go back here and play Alright, so we could even maybe take one more zero. Let's just see what it, it's like with 10. Uh, I'm going to put this back here like that. Oh, didn't stick. You know, this is one thing about Maya 2011 that I hate. Um, okay, I have to click in one of these boxes. I can't just click in an inactive area. So anyway, you get the idea. Um, you can see what, what it's doing with some various things. And there you go. So I hope you've learned something. And go ahead and read a book every day. <laughs> and uh, enjoy life. All right, thanks for watching.